side beat down. The punishment a Texas mom dished out on her child after he drove away in her BMW. And did she go too far? Follow the money. After Nike founder Phil Knight pledges another million dollars to Newt Bueller, we found the biggest donors to what has become the most expensive governor's race in Oregon history. And showdown in the Rose Quarter. We're live at the Moda Center, ahead of the Blazers' season opener against the Lakers. KGW News at 6 starts now. Rip City is ready to fight, live from the Moda Center, where tonight Damian Lillard and the Blazers are set to square off against LeBron James and the Lakers in the highly anticipated season opener. And look who just showed up minutes ago to the Moda Center. LeBron James ready to make his Lakers debut, but he's up against a Blazer team that has a great track record of beating the Lakers and winning home openers. It's going to be a big one for sure, but between all the excitement tonight, there will be some serious moments. Tonight, the team is also paying respects to its late owner, Paul Allen. Let's get started with live team coverage for you from the Moda Center tonight. Orlando Sanchez, all Blazers all day long. He's down there with our newest member of the KGW team, Dan Haggerty. How's it going there, guys? Big night. Yeah, LeBron. Hey, what a night. LeBron's not the only person making his debut tonight. Don't forget about it. <laughs> what an evening. What a great way to meet the people of Portland. I'm pinching myself right now. Got Orlando next to me here. How you doing, sir? Oh, life is good. How can we complain? Look at what we have around us right now. It's an amazing night for hoops. Music going on in the background. The sun's starting to set. We're getting a little closer to tip off. As you saw, LeBron James is in the building. The Blazers are in the building. The Lakers are in the building. Fans are gathering behind us. It's going to be a big night. Uh, as far as home openers go, you covered a few. This one's got to be up, up to uh, near the top. Oh, this is as big as it gets for me personally, and even talking to a lot of Blazers brass, this is pretty huge. This feels like a playoff game in so many ways. Members of the media coming from all over the world to be a part of this. I mean, as far as Israel, China, Mexico, Argentina, they're all credentialed because they all want to witness history. The sports world will revolve around Portland tonight. All eyes on Rip City. Eyes across the world watching Portland for a variety of reasons. Yes, it is the home opener. Yes, the Lakers are debuting LeBron James, arguably the biggest sports athlete in the world here Without in our city. But also, it comes on the heels of a shocking passing, the passing of the team's owner, Paul Allen, someone who uh, this city knew very well and helped make the Trailblazers who they are here in Portland. Of course, he will be honored tonight. His legacy, we're going to honor him a bit as well with a piece. Take a look. I signed a contract with Paul Allen to sell the Portland Trailblazers to Mr. Allen. It was a secretly planned, mysterious announcement in 1988. We're, we're planning to retain the, the complete management team. And from day one, the team was a passion for the new owner, Paul Allen. I bought the team because basketball is one of my real passions, and I wanted to be personally involved with a championship quality team. For a true fan of the game, this is a dream come true. We would see that passion again and again. He was their number one fan. The quiet billionaire who rarely gave interviews opened up to KGW in 1995 about his team and their new home. It's just such an involving game, it's such a beautiful game, it's such an exciting game. When I'm down there <laughs> under the basket, you know, watching a game, I'm, I'm totally into it. I'm, 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 I, I, yeah, I'm completely involved. Sports team owners usually watch from a distance up in the boxes behind the glass, not Paul Allen. A billionaire with business interests around the world was all in. Here's Neil O'Shea after Allen's passing. You could have a meeting with him five minutes beforehand, and the minute he walked out there, you were sitting next to a super fan. Tonight, the Blazers host the King, LeBron, in the house that Paul Allen built. The home crowd will cheer their team. Missing their number one fan. Well, I, I think people should, should know that I'm really a fan first. I really love the game. It will be an emotional one, no doubt. And if you couldn't tell, Paul Allen never missed a big game. You know he would have been here tonight to see LeBron debuting with the Lakers against his squad, looking for a win. Talk to me about, about this game, about LeBron being here in town, about what it means for the, uh, the Trailblazers at yeah. the start of their season. Yeah, this is a special night. You mentioned Paul Allen and all of the tributes that will happen throughout the night. The team wearing the Paul Allen uh, patches on their uniform. So he will be with them. They want to play for him in his honor. 
and they want to play well. But with a guy like LeBron James, he is such a polarizing figure in the sports world. Things elevate. The pressure will be on for Portland to get the job done. We had a chance to hear from LeBron James this morning, shooting around inside the Moda Center, and he's not looking past Dame and CJ. They're two of the best one-two punch as far as point guards and two guards that we have in our league up there with Steph Clay, uh, Brad and Wall. They, uh, they just create so many matchup problems for your team because they're able to play off one another. The ability to shoot the ball, the ability to penetrate. So you're trying to figure out how to stop LeBron James or at least slow him down. Yeah. Such a huge task at hand. Every time he touches the ball, you hear it from the crowd. It's automatic and that will happen tonight. The energy will be all the way up. This is a special night for so many reasons that we've talked about. It's an emotional evening on all levels. We are here covering it for you. After, you're heading inside, yeah? Oh, it's that time. I can't wait to walk in the building. Hopefully I can do it justice the way that LeBron James strolled through there making a fashion statement. We will bring you the energy. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, up close and personal, you will see it. Uh, and we're going to be covering all of the tributes as well to Paul Allen, so stick with us here on KGW. For now, guys, back to you. Boy, I cannot wait to hear about the game. And, you know, I think Paul Allen's going to be watching. I think so, too. Thanks, guys. Now to another bitter fight. This one, not sports related. It's between Governor Brown and Newt Bueller. Fundraising for the Oregon governor's race is hitting new highs. And that is thanks in great part to a big donation from Nike founder Phil Knight. He just dropped a million dollars to help Bueller unseat the governor. KGW's Pat Doris is here with a look at all that money and the race. Pat. Well, Laurel, it really has been some time since Republicans had a candidate that made the race for governor close in Oregon. Democrat Kate Brown still has an edge by most polls, but Republican Newt Bueller is very close and the money is pouring in on both sides. The latest campaign finance report show billionaire Phil Knight has personally invested $2 million directly into Republican Newt Bueller's campaign. It's the largest personal contribution in Oregon history and totally legal. There are no limits for these types of contributions. It signals that Phil Knight certainly thinks that it's super close. Um, Pacific University political scientist Jim Moore says the money makes it clear Knight is not pleased with Democrats who control Oregon politically. Well, it's clear that he wants Newt Bueller to be governor. Here's a look at the top three contributors for each candidate. On the Republican side, Phil Knight has given $2 million. In addition to that, he gave another million to the Republican Governors Association, which then gave most of that to the Bueller campaign. The Oregon Republican Party also kicked in $381,000. On the Democratic side, the Democratic Governors Association has given Kate Brown's campaign $650,000 of in-kind donations. That usually means people to work the campaign as well as equipment. The association also gave $630,000 in cash. A gun safety organization started and largely funded by billionaire Michael Bloomberg contributed $250,000. Moore, the political scientist, expects the campaigns to use some of that money to change up their TV ads in these final weeks. Brown is, just has to play defense. She's probably quite happy with the way things are going right now. It's Bueller who has to change the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Our and, KGW uh, political analyst, Len Bergstein, agrees. Bueller still needs to do more to stand out for voters. But the challenge is to come up with a very c concise and very strong closing message that drives people away from Kate Brown and towards Bueller. Because the message that he's got right now, Pat, is I'm as good a Democrat as Kate Brown is. So you can expect even more political ads on your TV in the coming days. Our analyst Len Bergstein says that might just turn off voters from both parties. We'll see. Back to you. I was just wondering how much more saturated can the airwaves oh, get lot, with ads? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Yeah. A local woman is redefining what it means to do your part in the community, even while coping with a terminal illness. KGW's Maggie Vespa joins us now with her amazing story. It is, Maggie. And guys, yeah, amazing is the perfect word for it, right? Brie Melton is truly a superhero. I mean, just check out her apartment. This right here is video of her actual apartment. It's stacked with donations that she has raked in with a crew of volunteers that she recruited. And this weekend, they will hand them out to Portland's homeless. And if that's not amazing enough, she is doing all of this while battling stage four heart failure. 
Black and white and emotionally charged, this video shows another clothes and food drive aimed at helping Portland's homeless. But unlike most events of this type, this wasn't backed by a church or a charity. It was the brainchild of one local woman who, two years later, is at it again. This is a... Uh Shoes we still have to sort through. We, we met Bree Melton and her daughter at their Milwaukee apartment, a.k.a. their headquarters. We have the toiletry bags to finish. Melton calls her mission a time to give. Her reason for giving is simple. She's lost jobs before and she and her kids have lost homes. She knows what it's like to worry about getting food, clothes, the basics. Five years ago, she told her family she wanted to eliminate that worry for others as much as they could. We had 50 sandwiches, some water bottles, and just the extra clothes out of our closet. Melton was hooked. Since then, social media and word of mouth have turned a time to give into a powerhouse movement. <laughs> it's a little bit insane. Melton's daughter, Michaela, is beyond proud of her mom. She also worries. See, oh, I'm gonna get emotional if I talk about it, but yeah, a lot of the time I'm like, you just need to, Cool it and let me take the reins kind of a little bit because I know it's really hard on her. Hard on her because Melton is battling stage four heart failure. She had to cancel recent giveaways for surgery. She knows no one would fault her for giving up on this effort altogether. I don't want to do that because if I don't do it, who is? So this weekend, with her pacemaker in place, she'll show up again, donations in tow, including a first of its kind for her efforts, a shower truck donated by her neighbor through his work. Melton is steadfast as ever. And it's not even just about me. It's about the people we're doing it for and even all of the people who have taken the time to donate and just uh, be part of, of the whole entire outreach. Um, I don't think I could ever stop. Yeah, sure doesn't seem like it. Well, a time to give is set for Sunday at 11 a.m. this Sunday, and it's happening at Southwest 4th and Cooch in downtown Portland. And Melton says they hope this year to serve a record 500 people. And she says any kind of help is welcome. If you want to help, they have a Facebook page. Again, it's called A Time to Give. We'll be posting that at KGW.com along with her incredible story. Guys, back to you. Wow. We are just humbled yeah. by what she is doing. Aren't you? It's, it's crazy. About Brie, it really is. I hope so many people help her out with this. Thank nice. you, Maggie. A burger bombshell across the country. Coming up next, the long list of burger places that bombed in a new report on their antibiotic policies. And the only two that got an A plus. You know, it's up there. It's close to a billion bucks. So that's pretty high. <laughs> Lottery fever is in the air, but we'll tell you why your odds of bagging almost a billion bucks are lower than ever this time around. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning, and there aren't even any clouds in the sky, but hey, you never know, right? Uh, it's a beautiful sunset going on, that's for sure. This is Cannon Beach, a little bit cooler. We still have a lot of clear air in our future, but there's also some rain in the seven-day forecast, and we'll take a look ahead at the outlook for the entire winter.